Hello everybody! Welcome to Stunks Music! My name's Ollie, and today we're going to have a look at Erosion in this deep dive episode. Let's go! Right, so here we are in the Ableton manual. Let's see what they got to say. The Erosion effect degrades the input signal by modulating a short delay with filtered noise or a sine wave. This adds noisy artifacts or aliasing downsampling like distortions that sound very digital. To change the sine wave frequency or noise band center frequency, click and drag along the X axis in the XY field. The Y axis controls the modulation amount. If you hold down the Alt PC or Alt Mac modifier key whilst clicking the XY field, the Y axis controls the bandwidth. Note, the bandwidth is not adjustable when sine is selected. The frequency control determines the colour or quality of the distortion. If the mode control is set to noise, this works in conjunction with the width control, which defines the noise bandwidth. Lower values lead to more selective distortion frequencies, while higher values affect the entire input signal. Width has no effect in sign mode. Noise and sign use a single modulation generator. However, Wide noise has independent noise generators for the left and right channels, which create a subtle stereo enhancement. Right, so it's only a short one again today, but it's got some quite good features. So let's run a couple of tests, and then we'll jump into Ableton and see what we get. Right, so here we are with the test results. As always, I've just started with my sub bass, which is in the project for you guys. Um, it's just a nice thick sine wave that's a good way to see what's being added. So this is our bass. So let's come in here. So we can see that's the bass. I'm hitting a G note. Now the first layer I have, let's get rid of you. I've got it on noise mode and I've set it width. So it's like the maximum width. It's going to be doing the majority of the noise it's doing. And amount I've shot all the way up. So the amount is going to be how much it's given it. So you can see here on the wide mode on noise, this is what it's adding. It's this proportional hump of, of noise between say 700 and right up to the top end here. Let's have a quick listen what that sounds like. Come to noise mode here and it's... So you can hear that fuzzy grit on top that's been added. Here compared to our original. So in the case of our bass that's probably not too useful but there will be some good uses for that. Secondly, we've put it on wide noise, and you see not much of a difference really there in where the sound is being added. We've got the frequency in the same space, noise or wide noise. You see a few more spikes in the noise where it's a little gentler on wide noise, but you can actually hear a difference. So let's select this one. So you can hear it's, if you've got headphones on especially, you can hear the, uh, the left right kind of panning of that as opposed to the noise being central and sine this one's quite fun it just whacks a sine wave in at whatever your designated frequency is so let's have a quick listen to that here on sine mode so in our case if this is a G where do you want those notes to be that's our G there at 154, so we can hit this to 1540, and that's going to exactly be on our G. And it's just reinforcing that note. Uh, of course, you can play with the amount, so how much you want it to pop through. So, my first use for this would be in sign mode for a sub bass. So, what this can be quite useful for is if you're going to make a sign make a sub and reprocess it into sampler it's a good way to add the frequencies that you might not hear on a phone or on a smaller system <clears throat> so some of you out there might not be able to actually hear this sub depending on your setup but that extra frequency should just help add some of those harmonics that will add it back in for you. So I really do like working with my sub as MIDI. It gives me the most control, but you can still work as MIDI if we come down here and audio track, resample mode, arm it and record it out. Now 
nice long note there. Let's grab that, Control R, and we'll go G sub, and we can bring the volume up if we like, somewhere here, and we will just Control J that, and then we can go to Instruments, Sampler, and drag that G sub back into here. So if we set the note to, oh, set the note to G, G1, and then we listen. So now that we've set that sign up, it's gonna be modulated with the rest of our keys and follow along. So if I just grab our span again here, you can see we've got our thick sub, and it's only small, but it's poking through. And that's just gonna help your sub come through on some smaller systems. I do have some built-in things here to help my sub pop through on smaller systems that I've not got turned on at the moment. If you guys wanted to delve into that, we've got some white noise here, which I think I'm currently uh, have turned off yet. We can turn that on here. Oh, come back up. Um, but this can be added with erosion the same way. So I'm gonna turn that back off to where we were. Yep, yeah, there we go. So yeah, that is uh, the first use of it in this sign mode, just to add that extra harmonic. And that can be used on all kinds of sounds. So if you have a big nasty resound and you just want an extra defined note harmonic and you're doing this kind of reprocessing resampling, that's a nice way just to reinforce whatever note it is you're trying to hit before you go and reprocess it into a sampler or whatever way you choose to reprocess. So the second way is trying to get some drums. So let me look at a break. I've got something here. Let me go to my DMB drums, loops, breaks, something funky, uh, swing snare. Let's see what we got here. Let me just loop this. That's a bit mad, but let's try this one. Cheesy half time. We love a bit of it. So let's come to erosion and we're going to this time have it on wide noise and noise. We'll check between the two. So first off, dragging your XY is going to give you the majority of your movement here your frequency and your amount. And then remembering we can alt click to do the width. <clears throat> so if you like working by moving the XY controller, that's totally doable with this plugin too. You don't have to type in your numbers down here. So let's have a little listen. We'll have the amount all the way down so it's got no effect. And then we'll slowly turn it up and try and find somewhere that's nice. So I find with whenever I'm doing these effects, I like to go amount all the way to the top so I can really hear what I'm doing and then slowly back it off. So let's go right the way up. So there's quite nice. We do a quick before and after. And that's just kind of hitting that open hi-hat, giving that a bit more noise. Let's grab our span again and have a little look at what that's actually doing. If you can hear it's just a bit crispier. It's just adding a little more of that um, that noise. I mean, it is, it's a noise generator, right? So let's come to here, have a little listen before and after and have a look. So visually, it's not really adding that much, but you can hear that bit of crispness, that little bit of noise that's just coming through. So the difference between noise and wide noise, let's have a listen now. Again, a very subtle effect, so I'm just gonna put it right up, the amount right up, and I'll hold Alt just to bring all of it up so we can hear really what, it, what the difference is. So the wide noise, again, it's just bringing it out into the stereo field a bit more. So I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna hold Alt to bring it down a bit more, bring it in a bit more, sorry, and then I'll bring the amount down and we'll try and find somewhere that's nice. So 
So that's just kind of dirtied up our drums a little bit. It's a nice way to kind of add a bit of crunch in there. The next thing we can do, I'm going to grab one of my dirty basses, as always. Let's come into Neurobase 1 and get one of these real nasty ones. Muddy Bass B1, what we got? <laughs> So it's quite a nice effect. Let's grab erosion on there and we're going to set the sign. And just try and reinforce that. You can hear before and after. We take that down to a much lower note if we want. And this is quite a nice one you can use just to, uh, again, a bit of a riser, a bit of a build, um, automating our frequency down here. So let's right click, show automation, and bring that up. And if you bring it right the way up, it's going to sound pretty obnoxious but you can just bring it up a small amount from wherever we are or 300s up to the 1k it's just a way to add a riser without being so obnoxious to add a whole white noise riser or a whole crazy thing you can just Add it to your sounds that's already there. We can turn the amount down as well so it's not quite as much. Or even automate that too. That's a nice way to kind of, like I say, build up, add these risers without being over the top with it. Um, I'm going to duplicate this before I do the next bit. So the other thing is just straight up adding noise to your bases. We'll delete automation, delete automation, wide noise, and we're going to bring that up and whack the width up. And let's have a little listen now. Uh, Control L. Obviously, amount at the top is always going to sound a bit too much, but I find it nice to start there and back off. So that's got some of that kind of high crispy stuff that I hear in a lot of uh, resampled neuro -y things. So after here, I'd be tempted to get an auto filter and then we could draw in some like pretty crazy uh, shapes. Oh, the other thing that we do actually have now is we have these shapes on Ableton 10. I'm not really using them much yet, but it's very interesting. We can do little ones, we can do big ones. Oop, right click. Some of them, D, 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 D. So let's have a look at this. So it's these kind of that I hear a lot in this kind of like neuro y stuff nowadays. Let's have a resample of that. Got there, but there we go. Um, control Z, external in, resample. Try that one again. So we got this. So rather than just filtering in, it's got this extra high end. Let's hear that with the erosion off and hear the difference. Does sound a lot more MIDI, a lot wetter. It's kind of got a bleh, bleh to it, as opposed to with the erosion on. So it's a nice way of just adding those higher frequencies, adding that noise, literally adding that noise to your basses. So from here, I'd probably resample this whole thing. This whole thing resampled and I would cut something out of this to kind of make a make a baseline so we could go 
just gonna kind of do it without thinking, but. got quite a nice robot-y sound to it. Probably even get rid of that last bit here, that first one, and just do this. And chop it up again. Go up. One more. And that's probably got a bit too much that high end fizzle in there. I can just come in with an auto filter and take that off again. And right click, audio track, external, resample, there, here, you. And I can take that, boost the volume up, rename it G Robot Wub. And we could try and make something out of that. So it's just an iterative process with me again and again and again. And when I take too much away, erosion is a really nice way to just add some of that fizzle back in from it, either being uh, on our sub bass or later on when we have a fully fledged sound, just trying to add some of that grit and dirt back into it, or adding a sine wave back into it, because <clears throat> we've put so much grit and dirt in that we've lost the original sound. All right, everyone, that'll do it for this episode of Deep Dive. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about erosion. As always, project files are available in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring a ding a ding that bell if you want to see more of our videos. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.